Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing another server ban tutorial, as you can see on screen right now. I'd like to apologize for the late video. I've been pretty busy all week making sure bugs are fixed and other problems are resolved with the bot update we just launched for our Discord server. So, hence I don't really have much time to record a video, but I figured better late than never, so this video is going to be coming out today, Friday. Now this tutorial itself may not look all that interesting or in depth and I will admit stuff like this fire here is something that I haven't really worked with a lot personally so I'm not the best at it but with some tinkering you can definitely make a banner or another project look a lot better even if you aren't really good at manipulating that sort of object. So this tutorial should be pretty quick. I'll try to speed through it while keeping all the details there just to show how quick it is to make something like this. And I'd like to point out if when you upload this banner you, and you see that the text isn't fitting too well, you'll be able to just move this entire center section. Hold shift while you do so. You can move that center section over and then move the text over as you see fit. So it's gonna be pretty easy to manipulate and we're gonna go into all the details now. So start off by going to File, New, 960 by 540. Gonna click Create. Gonna keep the background layer this time and we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna actually go ahead and group this background layer. We'll call this the base. We'll make this, let's say, orange. Go ahead and hide that for now. New layer, we're gonna be using black rectangle tool drop it down doesn't matter the size at the moment because you're going to be changing that so for the width we're going to want about 530 pixels then for the height it's going to be pretty extreme but it doesn't hurt to have it to be at that extreme side so now we have this there we can go rotate it one two and that should be fine yep it puts us right at 30 degree angle and the positioning looks just about perfect as well. So we're gonna hit the check mark. And we're gonna actually do control J, control G, and name this the backup, just in case we're gonna come back in the future and make some adjustments to it. Make this gray, hide it, and drag it below the base. We're gonna group this, we're gonna call this the center section. And I'm doing control G to group. I'm gonna make this, let's say, green, and we'll call this the base as well we can go ahead and move in the rest of the assets that we'll be using. Alright, I went ahead and grabbed these. We can go ahead and just drag them right in. This one is going to be at the base. Charizard is going to be right at the top here. So we can close that. Close a thumbnail. Pokeball is going to be part of the base. And then the fire is going to be part of the center section. So fire there, Pokeball at the base, Charizard, perfect. We'll group the Pokeball, make sure this is all orange still. Let's go. So let's hide a few of these things, and actually I forgot this one goes back over here. Okay, so now we have this over there, we can go and create a clipping mask. I'm going to do Control T, and adjust this a tad, not an overly large amount. So probably about here, we're going to go Filter. Blur Gallery, Field Blur, make this maybe 7 pixels, that should be fine. Then let's make sure that's green, just to have some continuity. And then we can go ahead and apply our inner shadow. Let's see, we can do 60, 1, 9, 13, perfect. And you can adjust that to be more or less depending on how you want it to look. So hit OK. And we're going to go to our fire real quick, so control T, let's bring this down in size a bit, put it to about here, okay, control T, let's downscale this a bit, to about here should be fine, maybe a little bit larger, perfect. And then we're going to do control J move this over to say here, control J one more time, here, 
and that should be long enough but I'll add one more just in case it doesn't hurt to have a be a little bit longer than we need it's not gonna do any harm perfect let's go ahead and merge these layers and we'll name this the fire left I'm gonna add that to the clipping mask control T there we go and that actually looks to be a little too big so we'll have to downscale that some, which is perfectly fine. And that feels about right, maybe still a little bit smaller. There we go, perfect. So we can do Control G again, clipping mask, Control T, flip the width, and flip the height. Bring that over. Just same thing, make sure to line it up. Cool. Then we can bring our Charizard down. We'll put him right between the two. So on the left side, he's above the fire, on the right side, he's below the fire, and you'll see why in just a moment. I'm gonna downscale him till we can see his tail right about here, if not a bit smaller. A little bit of adjusting. Perfect. We can go to image, adjustments, brightness, drop some of the brightness, up some of the contrast. That should be fine. Hit OK. We're going to do a drop shadow. Going to want it to go in that direction, a little bit less. Have the size be a little bit larger. That should be fine. Hit OK, and then we're going to rasterize this layer. Then we're going to come over to his wing because you can see his left wing and his claw are currently not outside the frame as you want it to be. And we're going to come to about here, go up with our pen tool, and go all the way around to about here. Right click, make selection, OK, and then do Control J. Then move that above, reclip the fire and name this the outside Charizard, or whichever you prefer. Outside Charizard, perfect. Okay, and there's only a couple steps left now. We're gonna go back to our initial base layer where all the white's at. I'm gonna go to blending options, then gradient overlay, and we're gonna do this one right here. And the colors for that are gonna be E9, E9, EB, and then for the right side, we're going to have D1, D2, D9. Hit OK. Scale. That should be fine. I think I'm content with that. Yep. Maybe a little bit on the angle. Perfect. Then for our Pokeballs, we're going to have these on overlay. And the way we're going to organize the Pokeballs is they're going to be a sort of pattern going all the way across. Now it's up to you how, how complex or how simple you want this pattern to be. I'm not going to make it overly complex. I'm going to have a little bit of a spin on it. So as you see, I have one Pokeball here, a little bit down actually. And then we're going to move one over to about here. And I put it above. Then I go back over here. I'm going to do Control J. I move it back over over there. See? Then Control J back on the one that was on top. I think it was that one. Yep. And we can just Control J one more time. Perfect. So it's all going to be going around. And now I'm going to go back through and do Control T. Actually, that one's going to stay the same. Control T, do a little bit of a spin. Control T, a little bit of a spin. And Control T. And once again, I'm going to keep on spinning each and every one of these. Perfect. And from here, I'm just going to copy paste these all the way down. Now, if you want to have it be even more unique, as I mentioned before, you can have each one going down, spinning in a different direction. But that's pretty time consuming, and I'm not going to do that for this video. But it's certainly pretty easy to do on your own.
easy but time consuming. So control J once again. And then I'm just gonna grab all of these and control J. And then I should only need one more, I think. Yep. I'm gonna grab a few of these, control J, and actually I'm gonna need more than a few. I need four, I think, or maybe five, doesn't hurt. Control J, move that over to about there, perfect. Now we have all the Pokeballs going across, the base layer is done, and then we just have a couple particle effects to do for the section here and the text, then this design is completely done. So I might just jump right into the text since we're already in this whole background section here. Let's name this the text. Let's make it say yellow. And the font we're gonna be using is Fugaz1. I'm not really sure where this font came from. I don't remember ever downloading it, but maybe I did. If not, then it's just a standard font that comes with Photoshop. Check mark. Now the two colors we're really gonna wanna use here are gonna be the ones we grab from our character. So I'm gonna grab an orange from Charizard and then a black from his wing. And then I'm gonna go into the blending options for this text. I'm gonna go into the gradient overlay, gradients, basics, click this. Now I'm gonna drag this over here and then I'm gonna click over there to add a new one. And the color I'm gonna use is gonna be one of the lighter shades of whitish, grayish from the backgrounds. So, okay. And this will take some playing around with to get looking how you want it to. You can even come back into here, into the gradient itself, and adjust how much or how little you have of one color by clicking on it and then adjusting little sliders diamond sliders on either side of it. And just a scale a little bit. Okay, and then drop shadow. This one, I don't want the size to be too big. I want it to be pretty uniform. There we go. Maybe about that, a little bit more distance. Cool. And I don't want any lowercase characters. I'm not sure why it defaulted to that. Perfect. And we'll actually scale this up a tad. Now the top section for this has a bit too much white, so you can come back in here because it's blending too much with this background layer. You can come in here and then further adjust this by further reducing the white content. Just like that. But I do want to have a tad, so maybe keep it at that right there. Cool. Now this last option for the center section is up to you if you want to do it. I think this is fine, but if you want to play around with different graphics such as grunges or particle effects, then this is a good spot to do it, especially if you want to have a whole fire effect going across this whole background area and not just the edges. So I just went ahead and grabbed these effects from the other file because I don't really have these assets anymore. I just cannibalize old projects and grab them from there. So for the dust, we can put that. It's not overly noticeable and it probably or definitely won't be noticeable when you have it in a server banner because it's going to be about that size, if not a little bit bigger. And people aren't going to notice these little spots right in the corner. But it's a nice little touch that people are able to see the full image, then it's cool to see that there's that level of detail. Sparks, I'll have it about there. And let's see, this one I'll put about here. And then I'll do one more right in the top right corner. Cool, and that should really wrap it up for this design. The file I'm gonna have for you guys to download is this original one that I spent a bit more time on and didn't quickly rush through. Not to say this one isn't bad, but this one is definitely a little bit better as I had more time to go back and fine tune a few things. This video was a little bit rushed because I just wanted to get a video out for all of you to just try on your own 
and just have something to work on this week. But future videos will be more complex, as I mentioned. So thank you so much for watching, and I will have another video popping up on screen for another server banner that's sort of similar to this one, which I think you'll also enjoy making if you haven't already tried it out.